the music, uh, its power, its happy turns of expression, the music of its cadences, and the felicities of its rhythm. It entered as no other book has into the making of the personal character and the public institutions of the English-speaking peoples. Said so we owe to it, we owe to it an incalculable debt, the English-speaking peoples. The Americans, the Canadians, the British, and people like me who have adopted English as our mother tongue. I speak English better than any other language. It's not as good as Brother Swagard's, but English happens to be my mother tongue because I dream in English and I swear in English. That makes it my mother tongue, according to the psychologists. Now, this is the tribute. If somebody paid such a tribute to the Quran, I can't imagine a Muslim scholar bettering it. Now, prepare for the shock. I said, prepare for the shock. From these 32 scholars of the highest eminence, backed by 50 cooperating denominations, they say, yet the King James Version has grave defects. And that these defects are so many and so serious. They are, these are not my words. They are, so, they are so many and so serious as to call for revision in the English translation. Calls for revision. And they revised it. And in the revision, the kingpin of the evangelist, the preacher, the hot gospeler, the Bible thumper, John 3.16. No Christian preacher is worth the name if he can't clinch the deal with John 3.16. John 3.16, for God so loved the world, in the authorized King James Version, that he gave his only begotten son. My brother Swagat changed the word begotten to unique. This is not from the King James Version. The King James Version says begotten. I heard brother Swagat on TV. Or was it video? This morning, this morning, there he's speaking to a group as if it was his own church group, you know, giving some lessons on Babylon. And I think it was on that or another one. He used the word begotten this morning. And in eight hours' time, he changed it to unique. <laughs> I'm asking, are you ashamed of the word begotten? Are you ashamed of it? That Jesus is the only begotten son? And Brother Swagart, in one of these 30 books that I had to purchase in South Africa before coming. These are his books. More than 30 I purchased and I went through each and every one of them. I had to. I want to know what my brother is talking about. What, is he, what does he really believe in? Because generally when you speak to a Christian, he, every Christian happens to be unique, absolutely unique. As soon as you corner him somewhere, he says, but I don't believe in that. As soon as you corner him somewhere and say, I don't believe in that. And every one of these thousand million, anyone I meet, he's unique. Everyone is unique. He belongs to the Church of England, but he doesn't you know, believe in what the Church of England teaches. He belongs to the Roman Catholic Church, but he doesn't really believe what the Roman Catholic Church teaches. Everyone is unique. So I said, now let me see now, what does he say in black and white? And in black and white, I found that he uses this John 3.16. And in his quotation, in his book, he says, begotten. Tonight, he says unique. Can you see the reason? The reason is obvious. The Muslims have been taking exception to these terms. In the Holy Quran, we are told, Lam yalid wa lam yulad, that God Almighty, He does not beget and is not begotten. And there is nothing like unto Him. Walam yakullahu kufan ahad. Then again, in very strong terms, the Quran condemns this idea that God begot a son, because begetting is an animal act. It belongs to the lower animal functions of sex. And we are not to attribute such a quality to God. As the Christian says in his catechism, he says, Jesus is the only begotten son, begotten, not made. And I have been asking, Christians, please explain, what are you really trying to emphasize when you say begotten, not made? What are you really trying to tell me? And believe me, in 40 years, no Englishman with the name has opened his mouth to me to explain to me what this word means, begotten. It had to be an American. It had to be an American. He was on a visit to Durban and he came on a guided tour of the mosque and I happened to be a guide. And 
discussing, it came up. I said, now, what does it mean? What are you trying to tell me? What, is, what does it mean to say begotten, not made? He said, it means, this American tells me, it means sired by God. I said, what? He said, no, 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 I don't say that. This is what it means. And believe me, that is what it means. Begotten, not made, means sired by God. I said, is that what you believe that God did? He said, no, I didn't say that. This is what it means. So the Muslim has taken strong exception to such an expression about God, that God begot a son. It's according to your language, your catechism. The Roman Catholic catechism, the Anglican catechism, the Methodist catech catechism, the Lutheran catechism. You accept this. This statement, begotten, not made. So not like Adam. Adam was made by God. Every doctrine and donkey was made by God. As such, metaphorically, he is the father of everything. But he said, no, Jesus is not like that. He is begotten, not made. I said, please explain. And no explanation. So this was something which the Muslims took exception to. And the 32 scholars of the highest eminence backed by 50 cooperating denominations, they threw it out to appease us. Did the Muslims threaten you that, look, if you don't take that word out of the Bible, we won't supply you oil? Did they do that? The Arabs? Did they tell you no oil if you don't take this word out from the Bible? Why did you take it out? Because it was an interpolation. It was not the word of God. The Bible you are carrying, it has this interpolation. And you said this morning, I heard the tape, he said, one word, even one word. He says, if it is not supposed to be there in this day, he says, the whole book should be thrown away. Whole book. But it's not only one word. There are chunks and chunks of it. According to your revival. And Brother Swagger tells me in one of his books, that if you want to know anything factual, knowledge, on any subject, you go to the experts. And he gives an example that if you want to know something about geology, you go to the geologist. If you want to know about the Bible, where do you go? To the barber, shoemaker? No, you go to the Bible experts, the Bible scholars, and they are telling you that this is a fabrication. Then, the Trinity, Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. Brother Swagat also quotes ad verbatim from the first episode of John, chapter 5, verse 7, where it says, For there are three that bear record in heaven, the Father, the Word, and the Holy Ghost, and these three are one. If he gives me time, he said, Now look, which book? I can open it and show it to you. Which book? Ad verbatim, his quotation. I said, Look, but it's not in my Bible. Is this not the Word of God? In my Bible, it's not there. Why is it not there? Because your scholars, 32 scholars of the highest eminence, Bible scholars, backed by 50 cooperating denominations, they say this is a, another fabrication, another interpolation. So they also threw it out without any ceremony. So, two. And I give you the ascension. Brother Swagat quotes in his book, Mark chapter 16, verse 16, another place, Mark chapter 16, verse 19. I say, it's not in my Bible. I didn't print this. The Jews didn't print it. The Hindus didn't print it. You Christians, you produced this book and you are telling me that this is the most up-to-date Bible, going to the most ancient manuscripts. So I look up for Ma Mark chapter 16, I see it ends at verse 8. 9 to 20 is missing. Did I take it out? The Muslims took it out? No. 32 scholars of the highest eminence, backed by 50 covering de denominations, they thought it fit that this is another fabrication imposed upon Christendom. And they also threw it out. It's not in my Bible. Therefore, it is not the word of God. If this is the word of God, then that is not the word of God. But, I pick up another Bible. Look at this. Look at these two. Brother Swagat, identical. Look at them. I see it back again. It's inside. What was thrown out? The ascension. There are only two places in, in the Gospels. 
in the Gospel of Matthew, Mark, Luke and John, there are only two places where ascension is mentioned. Mark chapter 16, verse 19. Luke chapter 24, verse 51. Thrown out of this version. Thrown out. As fabrication. Ascension. And yet these Bibles, each and every one of them, they tell us that Jesus, when he went to Jerusalem, he wrote the Dom 